Hi everybody, Claire here from Rainbow Acrylics. Um, really excited this morning for this the poem I'm about to do. Um, about a week ago, I did a turquoise iris painting. So it looked like um, the iris, the coloured part of your eye. Um, it was a black canvas um, with turquoise, blues, greens um, to um, create the design and it was a swipe. So I've since um, had a commission piece to do, exactly the same, but huge much much bigger so i'm using two canvases that are both um 61 by 76 centimeters so a diptych so two canvases um and instead of doing just the half of the pupil i'm doing half on one canvas and then the other half on the other canvas so it will actually look like a full pupil and a full iris but over two canvases so i'm so excited um so let me show you the colors i'm going to use so the colours are identical to the last iris painting I did, however the black is a different black. So this time I'm using De La Rowney Graduate Acrylic Black, um, the same pearl white, um, cerulean blue, phthalo turquoise, all from the same brand, um, and then three iridescent paints, my Pebio Studio Acrylics, um, green blue, blue green and then um, silver. Um, I'm mixing all of these with my homemade um, pouring medium, which is two parts PVA glue and one part water. Um, and then I'm going to mix them two parts P uh, pouring medium to one part paint um, and then test the consistency. Um, so I'll be back once I've done that. So I've just mixed all the paints. The colours are gorgeous, um, but I just want to quickly show you about paint consistency. So they have all been mixed exactly the same, two parts pouring medium with one part paint, but look at the difference. So this is the light blue, the non-metallic. Can you see that the, the trace of paint just disappears instantly? So that shows that that paint is really, really runny. So I'm actually going to have to add a little bit more paint to that. But then these two are the Pebio iridescent colours mixed the same way. And can you see how thick that is? So this is too thick. I'm not happy with this one either. It's too thick. So I'm going to add some more water to this. So it's a different brand of paint. Um, so that will have a, an impact. But also it's metallic, so uh, iridescent. So the iridescent paints are just so much thicker. And you can see that so clearly. The one that I'm happy with is the Thalo Turquoise. So this leaves, can you see it leaves a trace just for probably half a second. It leaves a little mound when you pour it in um, and there is a little bit of a trace. So I think that one is perfect. Um, the white, again, is a little bit thick and the silver is very thick. So this is the consistency I want. So it leaves a trace for a split second, um, but, but there is a mound this is too thin, no trace at all, and this is far too thick. Great, I'm also going to be adding one drop of spot-on treadmill silicon to each of these, which is what's going to create the lovely cells. Um, so I will be back when I'm ready to start pouring. Right, I've covered my canvases in the black, um, coated the sides. Um, I found this um, plastic circle, so I've put that down right in the centre. Um, I'm going to leave that down for a little while and it's just going to help me define um, the pupil. Um, so I've now got all my paints to the right consistency. Um, I actually put two drops of silicon in, not one, as I said. Um, and just to give you an idea of um, volume or volumes of paint, um, in each of these paints, the, the two parts pouring medium was 64 grams and then the paint 32 grams. So that was what I started with, just to give you a rough idea of the amount of paint. I'm, it's, a, it's a bit of a trial and error. I'm not quite sure if that's going to be enough paint. If it's not, I'll simply just mix some more. So as I did with the original iris painting, I'm going to put the, tur the dark turquoise down um, at the centre of the pupil. So that's going to be the main colour that will swipe across the rest.
just a couple of differences this time because this canvas is so so big these canvases are big um my plan is to instead of puddling the paint all on top of each other i'm going to spread it out a little bit so try not to put the paints on top of each other quite as much and that's because i just want i, I need the paint to spread more because the canvas is so much bigger I might come back and do some extra bits because I've actually got a lot of paint here. This, this paint's going to be fine. Loads of paint. Right, I think I'm going to leave it like that. That's quite a lot of paint, so I'm um, quite happy with that. So to swipe, I'm going to use um, laminating pouches. Um, so I've taken a pouch, I've taken it in half, and then cut it into strips. I'm going to do different size pieces, um, but because this is a much, much bigger canvas, um, the pieces will be wider. Certainly wider to start with, and then I might actually add in some smaller ones. Um, towards the end on, on top. So that, that piece I'm just cutting into three so I can keep reusing that. Um, let's give it a little torch, get rid of some of these air bubbles. do is now move this out the way right so I'm going to swipe from the inside out and then go all the way to the edge of the canvas and obviously the paint it will just fade um, as I get to the edge I'm putting this down and I'm just making sure that it is contacting throughout the whole of that edge and then just very, very slowly pulling it towards the edge. And then I'm going to clean this piece of plastic I want to get all that paint off so then I get a nice fresh swipe in a second with no bits of um, colour from the previous swipe. Um, each swipe I'm going to do, it's going to be directed from the middle of the pupil outwards. So there's going to be lots and lots of gaps. But that's absolutely fine because I'm then going to go in with some smaller swipes to fill in some of those gaps. So I'm just, I'm hardly putting any pressure on it. I'm just gently pulling it through the paint. So the swipe colour, the dark purple, it's just dragging all the other colours underneath with it.
So there it is, the full circle, the full pupil, full iris. Um, I love it. Um, it has gone so well. Um, in fact, this was easier than the smaller one. Um, I'll explain a few things about it um, as I go, as I show you on a close up. Um, the pupil, I've spent um, quite a long time just repainting um, the centre to try and make it as look as a perfect circle as possible. If it doesn't dry perfectly circular, what I will do um, is go over with a black permanent marker just to just to sharpen up the edges and just to adjust it. So I, I can I can play around with that. Um, what to show you first? Um, the edges of the canvas, because there was hardly any colour on the edges, I've just gone along the edges with um, the black, just touched up the edges. With the exception of these edges, I really, really like how it just drips down the side. So I've decided to leave it. If I'm not happy when it's dry, I can paint it black. But I just think, actually, it really adds to it. It's just, it's just, it's just fun. I, I really like the drip. So my plan is to leave them. Um, so as you saw, I did some big swipes to start with all the way around and then I did some smaller swipes um, and that worked really, really well. Um, towards the edges of the canvas, um, you'll see where it loses contact, um, like here, the, it, it, it get, got a bit sort of sticky towards the end. So what I've done this time, which I didn't with the smaller one, was then I've dragged a stick through to give some more sort of lines, um, radial lines from the centre, um, which I think works really, really well. Um, I've done some twiddly little bits around the edge of the pupil. So I've tried to bring a little bit of the black into the turquoise, and then I've done a few little lines like there, sort of going going in. So I've, you've got the impression that it, it radiates out from the pupil as a real iris does um, in real life. The cells are incredible. You know I like lots of cells, and so this doesn't disappoint me. Lots and lots of cells um, just covered in them. And because most of these paints are iridescent, when this is dry, it will look amazing. It will look gorgeous. The other thing I really like is where it fades out towards the edges. You can just see at the moment, it just looks a bit white over the top of the black. Um, but that's all either silver or pearl white, so it's going to sparkle. So you're not going to get this um, a real black edge. You're going to get a very subtly shimmery edge. And I think that will look amazing in contrast to the solid black pupil. Um, what else to say? Um, no, I think I think to be honest, that's just about it. I am so happy with it. I hope it dries exactly like this. Um, Oh, the other thing is that with the small um, one I did previously, I had to get some really small strips and do some extra swipes with some extra colour. I didn't do that at all with this. Um, I've only used the paint that was already on the canvas with the exception of just touching up the edges. Um, so there you go. So I'll be back when it's dry. It's dry. I'm so happy with it. It's just gorgeous. The colours are really electric. The blue is gorgeous. Um, I've got it on the floor um, underneath some spotlights um, today to try and show you um, the shimmer. Can you can you just see how with the bright with the bright spotlights on it, how iridescent, how metallic -y it is, how shiny it is. Um, let me go in for a close up. All of this is iridescent paint. Um, one of my favourite colours is this band here, this kind of blue band, because that's where that lighter blue, I think, has mixed with the um, iridescent uh, blue-green. So it gives this kind of electric bluey turquoise colour color, all, the, all the way around here. Um, it's just gorgeous. Um, another bit that I love is these black, this black lacing. Um, I think it's just, it's, absolutely gorgeous the way it just it sort of just fades into into nothing into the darkness um, I'm not used to doing paintings with a, such a dark dark background but I think it needs it this black is lovely um, against the the contrast of these really beautiful metallic colors um, one thing that did surprise me slightly well it shouldn't have surprised me but it did um, is that the turquoise now looks is very very dark so colors always dry darker um, but now it's dried so dark there isn't that much contrast between the pupil and the edge of the iris there um, but if you stand back I don't actually think that matters um, so there you go um, 
thinking of trying another one of these um, but instead of over the two canvases it's actually going to be four um, and I'm thinking of trying this for myself for my dining room actually um, and then also adding in a little bit of pink um, let me know what you think turquoises and a bit of pink a bit of um, magenta um, a bit of light pink a bit of dark pink I'm not really sure but somehow or even to have a sort of nice pinky purple in here somewhere um, I think would work really well Look at these little bits here. Let's focus in. When these are varnished, you can see how shiny they are, but when they varnish, they are gonna look absolutely gorgeous. Um, actually, let's go in for a close up some of the cells. I've almost got a sort of peacock feather effect there. I really like this bit here as well. Lines with all the cells. Wow, look at that cell. Wow. The more you look, the more cl the closer you look, this the more you see, the more detail you see. Um, I quite like this section here. Um, yeah, just fascinated by it. Great, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, please subscribe to my channel. Um, please hit the notification bell, uh, give me a thumbs up, please leave any comments you want to. If you've got any questions for me, I would love to hear from you. Um, so yeah, let me know any, any thoughts you have, that would be great. Great, so um, see you next time. Take care everybody, bye.